Hi, I'm Fred Pullen, Principal Program Manager on the Microsoft Edge team. We're excited to announce the next chapter in enterprise web browsing. Internet Explorer mode, or IE mode for short, provides compatibility for legacy websites. So that Microsoft Edge with IE mode now has compatibility for modern websites with using the Chromium engine, and compatibility for legacy web apps using IE mode. To explain the importance of this, let's talk a little bit about the history of Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer shipped about 25 years ago, which makes you really feel old if you remember Netscape Navigator or Gopher before that. But Internet when Internet Explorer first shipped, we really didn't have web standards that provided the power of the PC like we do today. We didn't have HTML5, we didn't have CSS3, we didn't have WebGL. And so as a result, Microsoft provided compatibility through binary extensions for uh, Java runtime engines, Silverlight, Flash, and other binary extensions that really lit up your web applications with the power of your PC. Over the years, though, we had to provide backward compatibility for older versions of Internet Explorer. And this problem has continued to this day. So let's look at some of the older document modes and how this evolved. When we first shipped IE5 and IE6, there weren't really a lot of web standards. So we had some proprietary standards in those, in those versions of the browser. When we shipped Internet Explorer 7, we knew that there were a lot of sites designed for IE5 and IE6. So we carried forward something called IE5 doc mode or quirks mode. Likewise, when we shipped IE8, we carried forward IE7 doc mode and IE5 doc mode to provide backward compatibility for those older sites. By the way, if you've ever heard of compatibility view, compatibility view is basically just a switch that says, if the, there's a valid doc type tag, give me IE7 doc mode. If there's not a valid doc type tag, I need IE5 doc mode. Well, the fact is many customers, especially large enterprise customers, have continued to use compatibility view inside their intranets for years. So many applications out there <coughs> have been designed for IE5 doc mode or IE7 doc mode or even IE8 doc mode, but um, haven't been designed for modern web or modern web browsers. Now in IE9, we carried forward all of these doc modes, IE8, 7, and 5. In IE10, we carried forward IE9, 8, 7, and 5. And in IE11, we carried forward all of these doc modes, including IE10. So in IE11, when it first shipped, we included document modes for IE 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 5. This gave a lot of power and a lot of backward compatibility, but with power comes some risk. Having all of those document modes essentially means you have a much bigger attack surface than you would if you were running a modern browser without older document modes or without backward compatibility. Now, customers came to us about five years ago and said that these document modes weren't enough, that these actually wouldn't work for some websites that were designed for older versions of the browser. So we introduced in 2014 IE8 Enterprise Mode, which provided higher fidelity emulation for older versions of IE8. And we also introduced IE7 Enterprise Mode, which is a higher fidelity emulation for IE8 running in compatibility view. So you either get IE7 doc mode or IE5 doc mode. The fact is, we know that customers are using these doc modes. We've, we've done independent surveys. Uh, we have talked to customers. When I did a session at Ignite, I had maybe 200 people in the room. And I said, how many of you still need Internet Explorer? And it was a sea of hands went up. So I said, all right, let's switch it up. How many of you no longer need Internet Explorer for anything? And I had four hands out of about 200 people. So clearly, there's still a need for Internet Explorer, even though our guidance for years has been, as you upgrade your web applications to modern standards, you can relieve yourself of the, of the dependency on Internet Explorer. When we introduced Windows 10, our suggestion to customers was to standardize on Microsoft Edge using Edge HTML as your modern browser and fall back to IE 11 as needed just for backward compatibility. But this is a jarring experience. There are a couple of problems with this. One is it's two different browsers. So end users were confused when you're, you're surfing the web using one browser and then suddenly another one pops up. Even if you're using the enterprise mode site list, 
to automatically pop up the appropriate browser at the appropriate time, it's still two different browsers and it's a confusing uh, user experience. The second problem with this is Microsoft Edge on Edge HTML was limited to Windows 10 semi-annual channel. So we only had Windows, uh, Microsoft Edge available on Windows 10, uh, not Windows 10 LTSC or LTSB, not Windows Server, not older versions of Windows like Windows 7 or Windows 8.1, only Windows 10, and it was tied to the operating system. So the browser updates were tied to OS updates. The good news is, with the advent of Microsoft Edge on the Chromium engine, some of these limitations go away. We now have a web browser that will work on every supported version of Windows. We will support Windows Server. We will support Windows 10 LTSB and LTSC branches. We will support Windows 7 and Windows 8.1. So this is really the Windows web browsing story, is that you can standardize on Microsoft Edge as your default web browser and fall back to IE 11 for backward compatibility. But we've done one other thing, and that's what we just announced at Microsoft Build. By introducing Internet Explorer mode, we're effectively blurring the lines between the browsers. So from an end user standpoint, it seems like a single browser. I'm able to just surf the web using Microsoft Edge. If I encounter a site that requires backward compatibility in IE 11, and it's on your enterprise mode site list or on your intranet, it will automatically render that site inside the Microsoft Edge frame. So let's talk about this in more detail. Today, you're able to run Microsoft Edge and fall back to IE 11, but it's a, it's a browsing experience across two different browsers. We also, as I mentioned before, only support Windows 10 semi-annual channel. Coming soon, we'll have versions of Microsoft Edge for Windows 10 LTSC, Windows 8.1, Windows 7, Windows Server. We also, with the release of Internet Explorer mode, will have a single Microsoft Edge browser that supports the best of both worlds, the best of modern web applications and legacy web applications using older Internet Explorer standards. Let's take a quick look at what this looks like. I'm switching to a machine using Microsoft Edge on Edge HTML. And if I try to go to a website that requires ActiveX controls or requires older technology, I may get a warning that I need to install the Microsoft Silverlight plugin. It actually won't work because I'm running Microsoft Edge. The best I can do here is to add this site to my enterprise mode site list and automatically, uh, automatically instantiate Internet Explorer when we encounter this site. Now in the new Microsoft Edge, if I go to this site, notice that it renders just fine because I'm in Internet Explorer mode. We will have an icon to indicate that it's Internet Explorer mode, um, so that this is primarily for your help desk to understand uh, which mode the user is in. But from an end user standpoint, this is just Microsoft Edge. There's nothing I need to know, nothing I need to do. As an end user, I just surf the web. If I encounter a site that's on my enterprise mode site list and listed uh, as approved for Internet Explorer, or a site that's on my intranet, and I'll explain that policy in a moment, then it will automatically instantiate inside Microsoft Edge using the appropriate mode. This includes support for all document modes, including enterprise mode, and it also includes support for ActiveX controls. Now let's talk about management. Today, Enterprise Mode has these policies available for management. So I can start in Microsoft Edge, and I can use the Enterprise Mode site list. I can also send all intranet sites over to Internet Explorer 11. Many customers start out by sending everything on their intranet to IE 11 because you know that you've tested everything for IE 11 and it works properly. As time goes by, you're able to create a list of exceptions in the Enterprise Mode site list sites that have been modernized and can open in Microsoft Edge. And eventually, that will flip where you can turn off the policy sending all intranet sites to IE 11 and only send the sites that require Internet Explorer 11. In other words, as the balance shifts and you've modernized your web applications, eventually you can use the enterprise mode site list uh, to just send the exceptions over to IE 11. So that's what we have today is that two browser balance and we have policies in Microsoft Edge and IE 11 to be able to support how and when and where users can instantiate uh, uh, Internet Explorer and, uh, and go back to Microsoft Edge. What we're adding in Internet Explorer mode is just a couple of policies. 
We have one policy in Microsoft Edge that decides what the default IE integration level is. So you can decide to keep the two browser experience. You can decide to, uh, to run IE 11 as an application just as you can today with Microsoft Edge. Or with, by flipping a switch, you can use IE mode, and IE mode will honor the other policies that you have in place. IE mode will honor your enterprise mode site list, and IE mode will honor the send all intranet sites to IE 11 policy. It's really how do you want IE 11 integrated into your Microsoft Edge experience. By the way, if you have a technical reason or a business reason why a site would need to run in the full version of Internet Explorer, we can create exceptions. So we are extending the enterprise mode site list schema to include a tag that says really open the site in, in the full version of Internet Explorer. I say technical or business reasons because we want your feedback on how well this works for everything. It should work perfectly for ActiveX controls, for document modes, but obviously there's a very long tail of line of business applications out there. When we were testing enterprise mode, for example, we found one customer who had hard-coded an ActiveX control to look for the operating system, and it wouldn't run if it was running on anything but Windows XP. So I realize there's a very long tail of line of business applications out there if for some reason you do encounter a site that either doesn't work in, in Internet Explorer mode or for business reasons, maybe the ISV doesn't support uh, that version and they want to be able to run the full version of Internet Explorer, you absolutely can create that exception in the enterprise mode site list so that the default behavior could be IE mode, but it can fall out to the full IE 11 app for a particular application uh, that you've specified. On the IE 11 side, we want to minimize the changes because, of course, we don't want to break anything with Internet Explorer. But we do have to add a policy deciding which version of Microsoft Edge you would prefer Internet Explorer to bounce back to. In other words, if I've chosen to launch Internet Explorer 11 uh, and I'm using that uh, switch to IE 11 app mode, I need to know which version of Microsoft Edge to switch back to. It could be that in your environment, you're happy with Microsoft Edge on Edge HTML and you want to be able to fully test uh, Microsoft Edge on Chromium before deploying. That's fine. We will absolutely support that and support you in that. Um, but you need to decide, is it okay if we choose the beta version of Microsoft Edge uh, on Chromium or do I fall back to Microsoft Edge uh, using Edge HTML if the beta version is not available? So you'll have some flexibility there on how and when and where your users get into Microsoft Edge. And obviously, uh, you can limit, at this point, the sites that instantiate in Internet Explorer as well. I also want to reassure you that Internet Explorer is not going away. Internet Explorer is considered a component of the operating system and follows the life cycle of the operating system on which it's installed. So on Windows Server 2019, for example, Internet Explorer 11 is supported until 2029. That said, we want to make sure that we start to restrict when and where and how Internet Explorer 11 is instantiated. As I showed before, Internet Explorer 11 has a lot of power under the hood with those multiple document modes, but with additional functionality comes additional risk. So we want to give you the tools that you need to be able to limit how and when and where your users get to Internet Explorer, and Internet Explorer mode is an important step in that journey. You can use Internet Explorer mode to limit the sites that instantiate Internet Explorer just to those sites that you've approved so that the user doesn't have to leave Microsoft Edge. They don't have to leave a modern browser. And obviously, as you upgrade your, your web applications to modern standards, you can continue to limit more and more and more where Internet Explorer is running. So what's next? We suggest that you keep using Microsoft Edge and Internet Explorer 11 because the enterprise mode site list will be honored by the next generation of Microsoft Edge on Chromium. The Internet Explorer mode feature uses the enterprise mode site list to be able to determine which sites to instantiate in IE mode. You can also join the Microsoft Edge community at MicrosoftEdgeInsider.com and please keep sending us your feedback. And finally, stay tuned, look for more features and functionality soon. We will have more to share in the coming weeks and months. Thank you and have a great Microsoft Build 2019.